One for the money, yes sir, two for the show Three for the phone, Polonius, smoke my saxophones in the throat I go for broke, then I go broke, so choke on all these quotes, ho Smoke whatever you smoke, use a joke, a Facebook post Slow to get it, so I get it, get bad like wild and prior Fuel to the fire, the funk squad stay down like flat tires Look at that Maya as we inspire, yo get badness Rap music's in a state of sadness, so relish and be glad It's the comeback for the first time since the first rhyme I've been the most to get bad, Jack Carter. I'm pointing for the host like Ad Vert. Get bad or get hurt. I killed it like a plaid man skirt. Turn up. Greetings and welcome to another edition of Seamless Style, powered by Polo Ticks and Polaroids. I'm your host, Mr. Parker. <sighs> greetings, 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 and salutations. For this episode, I want us to focus on Nordic patterns. Now, I'm not going to go into a long storied history of Nordic, what is Nordic, etc. Let's just say, well, first and foremost, Nordic is in historical terms, a region. There's Norway, there's Iceland, there's Finland, Scandinavian countries etc uh, a more layman term to generalize Nordic would be Vikings right that area that area that era uh, that is where Nordic comes from now as far as the pattern is concerned Nordic patterns is on a smaller scale a form of knitting right um for example like pharaoh pharaoh people tend to think that pharaoh is just that pattern right but pharaoh is actually a form of knitting well so is nordic all right but with nordic you do tend to receive a specific or specific patterns Nordic is oftentimes because, again, America and its ego, right? Nordic is oftentimes misquoted or mistaken by the term snowflake, snowflake sweater, snowflake pattern, uh, reindeer, uh, holiday. <sighs> One day, God willing, we'll be able to get past all of this crap. Right. Because that's what it is at the end of the day. It's crap. But America and its ego takes something, adopts it as, as its own, gives it its own terms. And we just run with it blindly. Uh, but that said, I am a fan of Nordic pattern. And through doing this platform, this content, I became an even bigger fan. Because a lot of times, the more you learn, the more you know, the more you may like something, right? That's number one. And then number two, let's be honest, who 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 doesn't like the Vikings? That's why I named this episode Eric the Red, all right? Uh, there were several names that uh, this episode was almost named. Ragnarok, Ragnar Lofbrook, Odin. The God Odin. Like there was a Valhalla. There was a lot of different names I was about to give this episode, but Eric the Red just stuck out with me uh for me. Um you can do your research on Eric the Red. But Eric the Red was that guy. All right. Uh anywho. This episode we're gonna focus on Nordic patterns, right? So I'm gonna have two rigs for you. Yeah, I'm going to have two rigs for you. 
plus the ensemble I'm wearing makes three. All right. Uh, the ensemble I'm wearing, the purchase of the Nordic piece in this ensemble was inspired strictly by Nigel um, in the scene where Nigel gives Andy uh, the truth, gives her a piece of his mind, gives her the truth. And uh, the next scene right after that, he transforms her. Uh, he had on a sweater that was similar to this, right? Matter of fact, I don't, I'm almost positive it wasn't even a Nordic pattern, but it just, it was a, it was between that. And then there's another scene where Nigel has on a sweater in Central Park during a photo shoot. Uh, those two sweaters inspired my intense like for this type of sweater. And when I saw it, uh, the price just couldn't be beat, so it had to be purchased. All right, but let's start at the bottom. These uh, beautiful slippers here. I chased these slippers for under a year. All right, the Belvin calfskin slipper, uh, Ralph Lauren purple label. Uh, it's actually a Belgian slipper, but Ralph Ralph Lauren named it. You know, they a lot of times give their footwear names, and this is the Belvin. Uh, beautiful calfskin leather here, beautiful brown tones, cognac tones. Uh, the bow tie here just gives it gives it that option to be super formal or you can do it like I did and just go kind of dress casual. Uh, just a beautiful, just a beautiful piece of footwear here. Uh, I went with uh, ruby red socks with navy stripes. I went with a pair of polo blue label flannel, wool flannel uh, dress trousers, uh, a plaid spread collared work shirt, a ruby red heraldic uh, necktie, the polo blue label. No, rugby Ralph Lauren, sorry. Rugby Ralph Lauren uh, baker's cap. Um, definitely wanted a baker's cap or a tam, something with a little more width than your typical driving cap for this particular ensemble. And then the piece de resistance is this Nordic sweater here. Uh, cardigan, full zip cardigan, dual zippers. You know, y'all know I'm a, I'm a fiend for dual zippers on a jacket or a sweater. Uh, dual zippers, a dark olive, a dark olive base ribbed at the sleeves ribbed at the waist and then uh a few great uh fall fall colors in it ruby red navy uh an even darker wine all right and a, just a hint of cream so uh this ensemble just screams you know for me when you combine a nordic pattern on a cardigan such as this that's full zip duals dual zippers it's like the comfort food of clothing all right it's just a comfortability with this i'm comfortable but the look itself tends to make people around you a little more comfortable you know what i mean so uh you know great ensemble like i said very comfortable yet uh very very european very 1940s 1950s very country gentleman very rustic sheet extreme rustic sheet rustic sheet just per perfect pairing man just a perfect uh, just a, a perfect storm when it comes to uh that ralph lauren fashion and lifestyle now fragrance of the ensemble can also double as fragrance of the episode but it's definitely fragrance of the ensemble because this ensemble is the only ensemble that is rustic sheep all right supreme leather now supreme leather probably gets the least amount of use of the three supremes right or the three supremes that i have anyway it gets the least amount of use and it's not because it's my least favorite of the three. It's just that this for me and this I'm only speaking for Parker for me. 
Supreme Leather is maybe one of the greatest fragrances ever. I said what I said. It's quite possibly one of the greatest fragrances ever. Supreme Leather has everything you can think of in it as far as accomplishing something when you put on a, a, a fragrance. When you wear a cologne, you're trying to accomplish something. You don't put on a cologne as an afterthought, right? You don't put on a cologne like you brush your teeth or like you wash your body. Like cologne, you don't have to ever wear a cologne. So when you put on a fragrance, you're putting it on to achieve something. Supreme Leather is possibly one of the greatest fragrance, if not the greatest fragrance ever created, because it can check off pretty much any and every box that you could think of. Supreme Leather is just subtle enough that you can wear this in the summer. Supreme Leather is strong enough that you can wear this in the fall and, and, and winter. Supreme Leather is bold enough that it complements a rustic chic ensemble perfectly the same way oud does the same way cashmere does right the supremes complement rustic chic perfectly 999 times out of a thousand uh supreme leather has just enough wood just enough uh whiskey just enough floral that it's a man's fragrance. But I'm willing to bet that if a woman pretending on her pretending, depending on her pheromones, if a woman put this on with a highly floral fragrance that was a woman's fragrance, it would probably create something beautiful. That's that's how well rounded Supreme Leather is. All right. So you know, I, I'm always speaking big of the of Supreme Cashmere and Supreme Oud because I love them. But if you want the truth, Supreme Leather, if you're going to if you can only have one Supreme. I would buy Supreme Leather. Just because, again, it's so well rounded as a fragrance. All right. Anywho, without any further ado. Let's get into this episode. Nordic patterns. All right. We taking it from Minnesota to Iceland. Y'all ready? Me too. Now let's go. Now our first look is a hue or a hue that I don't particularly particularly have a lot of in my arsenal. Right? And it's basically because of my dark skin complexion. I don't wear a lot of black. I just don't. Y'all already know this about me. It's not a it's not a big deal. Um, but as I look around the room, I do have more pieces that are uh, primarily black than I have had uh, over the past years. But with that said, when I saw this piece on eBay, no brainer no brainer and actually this is the piece that inspired this episode right this is the nordic piece that inspired me to do this episode uh one because i think it was listed as a snowflake sweater on ebay which it's i get it but come on all right but this is the this is the piece that uh spawned this uh, spawned this episode right so Man, I, I can't. I know I had. A, I, I paid a good price for it, right? It was a great price. It was brand new with tags, but I want to say it was definitely under a hundred dollars. But I, I can't remember if they had it listed as an auction only, or buy it now, or both. I can't remember, but I know I did wait to make the purchase for whatever reason. So I think that was the reason, right? But knowing that I was going to get this piece. I started looking for shoes as soon as I saw this piece and determined it was going to be mine. Right. So as I stated, I typically go RalphLauren.com first. 
All right. I typically go there first just uh, because one. Supporting the company itself. Two, um, when you're looking for specifics, that might be the, the place you would want to think to go first. For me, it just is right. Um, and three, my second option would have been low teak for anything else except shoes. He typically doesn't have shoes. So I knew it was going to either be Ralph Lauren or eBay. All right. So I went to Ralph Lauren first and I found the perfect pair of shoes. Matter of fact, I'm going to put them up on the screen. I found the perfect pair of boots. Perfect pair. Perfect, perfect, perfect. They only carry them up to a size 12. I called no 13s in the company. No, uh, no shipping order coming in anytime soon that showed 13s. <sighs> I put it to you like this. I feel like this shoe slash boot is so perfect for this piece that even though I settled and got a great pair of footwear to go with this, if, and I speak it to it, speak it into existence. If and when the RLX shoe slash boot does come does become available in a 13, I'm still going to get it. I'm still going to get it because I just think it's the perfect it's the perfect pair of footwear for this this sweater. Right. That, that pair of footwear for this sweater is a 10 out of on a scale of one to 10. The, the pair that I settled for is an eight and a half, 8.75, which is still a fantastic. When you think of one through 10, that's fantastic. If you met a woman or if you met a man that was an 8.75, almost a nine out of 10, I mean, you're probably not really complaining, complaining about anything. That said, the footwear that I chose uh, is an 8.75, 8 8 8.5, 8.75 out of 10 for this uh, ensemble. But without any further ado, let's go. Let's start at the bottom. So these boots, again, like I said, I found these boots on, on RalphLauren.com. They uh, were my second choice. All right. Uh, my third choice actually was on eBay and I might put these on the screen. This was a pair, but I couldn't find them in my size. But these were sneakers and I thought they was cool as hell, too. But this was my second uh, second choice. This beautiful boot. Great, uh, great traction at the bottom, man. The, the traction is really attractive. It's really attractive uh, the way the way the bottom of this boot is built. But uh, hard rubberized sole. Uh, the the uh, what's becoming a standard on a lot of Ralph Lauren uh, casual footwear. The stripes here in black and uh, black and gold. The the uh, rope type sneakers, beautiful hiking boot, man. Beautiful hiking boot. This is like I said, eight point seven five out of ten. It's got the hydro guard technology in it, so it's actually a performance type boot. You can actually hike in these. Now, went with a dark pair, very dark pair of blue jeans. Why? One, because I felt like black jeans would be too much. And one A, I don't have any black jeans. But even if I did, I felt like for me, black jeans would just be too much. It was a little bit too, it's a little bit too safe. It was a little bit too easy. Now, if I had a pair of say slim fit black cords, I definitely would have went that route. But just black denim, I did, I mean, I knew I didn't have them anyway. But I wasn't gonna buy a pair for this because again, I just felt like it was too safe. Now you could do that, obviously, and you know, to each his or her own. But I went with a pair of uh, dark blue, blue jeans. Now, I would even do I have a pair of dark wash blue jeans that have a little fading and a little bit of distress and repair on it. I might even go that route when I actually wear this ensemble. But for the episode, I kept it. I kept it clean. I kept I, I wanted to keep a clean silhouette. Right. And then the piece that resist on for this ensemble is this polo blue label Nordic pattern black 
heavy ribbed turtleneck all right thick turtleneck the, the, the actual turtleneck portion is very thick all right uh this gold this almost sun gold yellow is just beautiful on here and just look at the nordic patterns man the nordic patterns are just they're 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 uh sexy they're sexy that's that's the word i'm looking for man the pattern is across the back as well as the front and on the sleeve so your actual nordic pattern uh, pa uh transforms through the sleeves as well man it's just beautiful just beautiful now uh to finish this look off you know depending on the weather if it if it is really cold outside uh gray duffel coat gray duffel coat would be great uh if you have a black uh corduroy um sports coat that would work um or if you have if you have like a solid a solid black uh body warmer that would be something great that could go over this because this with a thermal shirt, you may not need any outerwear at all. Right. But as far as Nordic patterns are concerned, the way this the way this turtleneck sweater just pops out at you, man, this beautiful hue of yellow would would make Wiz Khalifa happy. Now, this particular sweater is damn near vintage just from a standpoint of how long it's been out. It's not quite vintage. It hasn't been out long enough yet to be considered vintage. But this sweater has been out for a long time. I had this sweater. I bought this sweater, I think, my first holiday season working at Ralph Lauren. All right. Back then I was an extra large. So I ended up selling it because it, it just it was too big. But when I saw this piece uh, floating around online, I said, you know, what? Well, let me grab that again, man, because there's one. Thing about this particular Nordic sweater that I just absolutely love, right? And that's the hints of Kelly Green. I love the the Kelly Green. It's just it's strategically placed on this sweater. It's not a lot of Kelly Green, all right? The sweater is black with white Nordic patterns, but there's just enough Kelly Green in there that it's like it just pops. It's just that little bit of Kelly Green, just, you know what I mean? So when I saw it online, had to copy it and uh, styled it up, what I would consider uh, very nice. Styled it up even better, actually, than when I, when I had it so many years ago. I think when I had it so many years ago, I did it with black jeans and uh, I don't know. I don't even know what footwear I wore, but we talking 2023. And Parker is always steadily elevating his style. All right. So let's start at the bottom. A couple of episodes ago, uh, I had a, a ensemble that had either the black uh, monk strap option or these black sneakers. Well, we brought these black sneakers back because they 1000 percent go better with this ensemble than the black monk straps all right so these black leather ralph polo ralph lauren sneakers all black nothing on the sides no logos and your white sole all right great pair of casual sneakers here uh socks you could keep it simple i don't know why i didn't pull no socks out for this but you could keep it simple you know something black i think i got a, a black pair of argyle socks that'll work great with here matter of fact that's what'll be on here uh the black Argyles. Uh, these pants, slim fit Kelly Green jeans, denim. All right, they are Ralph Lauren purple label, so the standing jockey on the coin pocket. Great color, and that's the reason we pulled them out. That great Kelly Green color, which goes great with the Kelly Green in this sweater. All right, uh, we put the sweater over top of a lightweight flannel plaid shirt all right uh kelly green white a little bit of pink a little bit of it's probably dark navy but it could easily pass for black but the primary reason is that kelly green in that plaid pattern all right we threw on a bow tie just for a whimsical effect right we threw on a pin dot 
polo blue label bow tie, black with white pin dots. Add the featured piece here, this Nordic sweater, all right? Black base, shawl collar, white Nordic patterns all over, all right? Beautiful giant air quote snowflakes, white uh, all across the front, back, and sleeves, all right? That Nordic pattern is just really large, bold, in your face, and popping, all right? And then, like I said, the Kelly Green strategically placed on the shoulders and right above your ribbed waist and right above your ribbed cuffs on your sleeve. Just enough Kelly Green to really grab people's attention. It really pops. That Kelly Green just really pops. So we used our we used our denim and our uh, flannel shirt to accentuate that Kelly Green that's in this Nordic sweat sweater. And it's just a beautiful popping experience. And that's another episode in the books. Now, what I did forget to do in the introduction was I wanted to show a piece that was an honorable mention piece. All right. It didn't make the cut. Only reason it didn't make the cut is because it was a huge feature last holiday season. All right. So 2022 is when I purchased this piece and it immediately went into a holiday episode so um that's the only reason because this might be <sighs> i don't think there's a might this is my favorite nordic piece that i own it's just super dope it's just super dope it's just super super dope polo spelled across the front RL on one sleeve, giant Nordic pattern throughout. That charcoal gray shawl collar is just super popping. That cream, man, this sweater. This sweater is a serious piece, all right? Like I said, only reason it didn't make this episode is because I featured it last holiday season, all right? But as far as the Nordic pieces I own, including this one, that is my favorite piece. Now, with that said, we saw some great Nordic sweaters in this episode. What did y'all think, man? Which ensemble did you like the best, all right? Also, what's your stance on Nordic pieces? Do you have a few? Do you have a lot? Do you not have any? And whichever way you answer, why? Why not? Um, again, I always liked Nordic pieces, right? I always liked the Nordic pattern. But the more, re again, the more research you do on something that you already like, you tend to like it even more. So I, at this point, I'm a, I'm a fan of Nordic pieces. So. You know, if I look at my eBay watch list or if I go into RalphLauren.com and look into my current cart, if I'm not mistaken, there are three Nordic pieces in my RalphLauren.com uh, cart. And then as far as eBay is concerned, my watch list probably has another five or six. There's man, there, there, is, there are a plethora. I'm talking about a, a, a large number of Nordic pattern sweaters. Um, that are just out of this world, amazing looking. And there's so much you can do with them. There's so many ways you can style them. So uh, if you're not a fan, if you weren't a fan or you're not a fan, hopefully this um, this episode, you know, changed your mind a little bit or leaned you more towards the pattern. If you just don't like it and you just don't like it, and I get it. I get it 1000% because we are all entitled to like or dislike whatever right uh but if you were on the fence or you know it was an afterthought trust me when i tell you brothers and sisters jump on them nordic pieces man they they great looking pieces and they, they they're very 
they're they're extremely versatile when it comes to styling. All right. Uh, I had some commentary that I wanted to do in reference to a lot of things going on in the content world right now. Uh, podcast beefs, things of that nature. But you know what? I'm going to hold those thoughts. I'm going to hold those thoughts because I'm going to do a lot more of that on Patreon. You know, um, just because once I get to once I get to my content being primarily there, I want to give you more than just the clothes. I want to be able to open up dialogue so that members can, you know, we can have real conversations and not worry about being canceled. Right. So I save it for that. Just know that uh, we're all we're all here in this world together and respect is required until it's not. All right. And then when when there is no respect. Things can go one way or the other. So just be careful. All right. Hit that like. Hit that subscribe and tell a friend because we here and all our Viking glory. All right. I ain't no Viking, bro, but I love Nordic. You do, too. Artists paint pictures and haters. They do what they always do, man. They paint narratives. So don't be a hater. All right. Y'all have a good one.